Hi there. So we're going to continue on with the Letter of the Alphabet series. I promised you the other day we are going to do O is for Orphan. So we're going to cover O is for Orphan. What do I mean by Orphan? No, magically when you stroke, your parents aren't going to die and you're not going to have any relatives anymore. That's not going to happen. What I mean by Orphan is stroke is technically an orphan disease. Now there are basically two definitions of Orphan. Um, I'm going to use the one first one off the FDA website. Uh, that an orphan disease, basically, there isn't a large enough population, right? So there's only two to 300,000 people that have this condition. There isn't enough of a sample size to be truly scientific about it, right? However, there's another flip side of that coin. There's not enough of a sample size to make it a financially viable thing, right? So... Stroke is an orphan disease because it's not financially rewarding, right? So let's look at some of the potential outcomes of a stroke. Well, one, you may need the TPA. That's really only useful in ischemic strokes. Well, you're only going to get that once, maybe twice in a lifetime, and your drug plan is probably going to cover it. Now, I live in Canada. I live in Ontario in Canada. Everything that happened in the hospital, with the exception of snacks, TV, and coffee, was free. Right? Didn't cost me a dime. Right, so in the states, that's like six thousand dollars for TPA. I don't know what it costs here in Ontario, because no one ever billed me for it. Right, so that's a one-time shot, and you're being billed that through the hospital. If you need long-term medications, uh, be it cholesterol medication, there's already cholesterol medication on the market. They're not going to reinvent a wheel just to give a stroke person cholesterol medication. You may need um, aspirin. Well, fun fact, that already exists. <coughs> They're not gonna reinvent the wheel for aspirin. You may need, um, because of your stroke, anti-anxiety, anti-depression medications. Well, those already exist. Um, They're not gonna reinvent the wheel just for you. Um, you may need other medications, but the great news is those medications already exist. <clears throat> so the pharmaceutical industry, there is no incentive for them to create new stroke treatments. Right? Basically, they're going to help manage your post-stroke world, be that joint pain, be that mental health concerns, such as anxiety, depression. For some people, once they've had a stroke or a brain injury, they can become schizophrenic or schizotypic, so they will need those medications. You may become schizoaffective, so you'll need those medications. You may have high blood pressure, those medications. You may have a cholesterol issue, those medications. You may have other ongoing health concerns that medications can assist with. Well, those drugs already exist, right? And if they don't, um, you were probably such a portion of such a small population in the overall stroke community or brain injury community, there's no money in it. Right? There's legitimately no money in them making a drug for you and the other 10 people in your country. Right? Now, <clears throat> another reason why stroke is an orphan disorder is we understand the basic types of strokes. You're ischemic and you're hemorrhagic. Right? And then where they occur in the brain, front brain, middle brain, back brain, left side, right side, brain stem, you know, where that stroke is occurring. We better understand that. Now, the treatment ultimately is either drugs or surgery, right? Um, well, the drug companies aren't going to make any more money off the TPA um, unless they develop a new form of TPA uh, and make it cheaper and make it more usable, right? Um meaning you can have more than one course of it over a certain period of time. So the hospitals now have the ability to distribute it more often. Well, for the surgery, ultimately, most of the drugs that are going to be needed for the surgery already exist. Right? So it's not like they're going to be able to create new drugs. Now, that's not to say that new revolutions and evolutions in the, street, in the treatment and diagnosing... Di Diagnostic, the di diagnosing, 
being a good diagnostician, holy fuck aphasia, um, and the treatment of a stroke, those can't be redeveloped. But those are going to be in your university, in your teaching hospitals, in your scientific community. They're outside of the pharmaceutical industry, right? Um, because generally, the large revolutions in medical exploration don't happen inside the pharmaceutical industry. They happen at your teaching hospitals, at your universities, and sometimes during cases of serious conflagration, right? Because doctors in periods of turmoil have a little bit more latitude in what they're going to attempt to save people's lives. Right? <clears throat> Be that in various situations. So, now, is it possible that one of those happy accidents, I don't mean like Bob Ross, like happy little trees, um, those are happy little trees, Right. Uh, is it possible there's a happy accident in a laboratory someplace where they're trying to create one other type of drug or compound and they accidentally create some magical device, kind of like Velcro and post-it notes, right? Happy accidents. Um, yeah, it, it's totally possible. Um, however, we can't hope on the happy accident, right? But because the happy accident doesn't happen all that often, right? You don't always have happy little trees in the, in the laboratory. Um, or laboratory, depending on your pronunciation. Um, so that being said, you have to rely upon the hospitals and the teaching facilities and the universities that are trying to stay on the cutting edge of neurotrauma, neuroexploration, brain injury, and stroke. Right? As as their understanding develops, the treatments will develop along with it. But that does not necessarily mean the medications will come alongside of it, right? That's not a guaranteed thing. So because of that, stroke will continue to be an orphan illness, right? For a couple of reasons. One, people don't understand it in many cases, right? Um, the doctors can give you, again, very educated generalities, right, at times. The, your pharmacist will be able to give you the best recommendations on what they know um, you know the drug companies will only do the research to develop a new medication where they're gonna make money on it because again they're companies they're businesses they're not charities they're there to help make money for their shareholders for their company right they're not there as, as a charitable event now this forgives the whole ethical conversation on what is a fair amount to charge for medication because I know not so much in my country um, because we basically in Canada we basically told the pharmaceutical manufacturers this is the price the government of Canada will pay or the government of Ontario will pay I know in the United States drug pricing is a different issue altogether and I'm gonna be honest I don't understand it um, mainly because there's no need for me to do so um, but I understand that in your country you have more of a fair market economy and big pharma basically doesn't want to play ball, right? And this is in no way try to be political about your situation. It's just the reality of that deal, right? Um, so not only that, there's another way that stroke can be an orphan disorder, right? Especially for us young stroke folk. I'm under 50 when I had my stroke, right? Um, so for those of us that are under 50, there's another way this stroke can be an orphan disease, right? The majority of stroke research, the majority of stroke occurrence, and the majority of stroke treatment is geared for those 70 and higher, right? Old people, right? So if you've had your stroke young, be prepared for... Some of the experts not to really know what they're talking about. And it's not that they don't. It's just that your stroke was young. So you're not the 84-year-old individual that threw a stroke. Because the reason why an 84-year-old person threw a stroke, they're old. Old people die. Old people die of stroke and heart disease. Because they're old. They've lived a life. They've made shitty food choices. They've made shitty lifestyle decisions. They're fat. They have di diabetes. They have blood pressure issues. They have heart conditions. They're on medications. They're whatever. They're old. 
And that's not to diminish what old people go through with their stroke. But if you're young, some of the literature you're going to read isn't really relevant to you. Or if it is relevant, you've got to find it. You've got to search line by line to find the relevancy in that document for you. Um, kind of one of the reasons why I continue the channel is because for all you young stroke folk out there, you might be watching my channel. You might be subscribing to my channel. And again, if you like what you've been watching over the last three months, you may continue to like what you're going to see in the future. Please subscribe so you get the, the chance to know when the videos come out. Hit the little bell dingy thingy so that uh, you can know as, immediately when things come out. And then share this with your friends and leave comments down below. <clears throat> now then, back off the advertising rant. When it comes to young stroke, right, you're going to be discouraged. Mainly because you're going to go to support groups in your area and it's going to be a lot of old folk. Right? You're going to go to events in your area and it's going to be a lot of old folk. Um, and if you're having a fairly progressive re recovery like I am, you just want to get back to work, get back to your life, find normal, right? And, and get back into normal as best you can. Right? This, this isn't easy, right? I make it look well, but I'm sitting right now. So I'm pretty decent. There are times where I have horrendous balance issues. Um, I can still have aphasia issues. I can get headaches, fluorescent lights play havoc upon me. The great thing is none of those conditions are medically treatable. Right. Um, for the balance issues, I lean on things. I go to physio. Maybe we have to relook at lowering the doses on one of my medications, but that's not a new medication. Right. Um, for the light and noise sensitivity, I might have to start wearing hats more often. Now, I hate baseball hats. <clears throat> so that now means I'm going to have to maybe learn to wear a baseball hat or I'm going to have to uh, find a hat that doesn't look dorky. Um, I might have to start wearing sunglasses, especially indoors. I might have to start wearing earplugs. But the great thing is you can't get a prescription for earplugs, right? Um, unless I go out and buy a $210 pair of Peltors, um, which won't help at all, but will look really tactical and cool. I'll be tactical at work with my Peltors. Um, totally unneeded, but whatever. Um, or I go and buy a little jug for eight bucks of foamy earplugs, right? Or for 20 bucks, I buy some silicone earplugs or whatever. Um, again, baseball hat, baseball hat, sunglasses, and earplugs. There's nothing the pharmaceutical industry gets out of that. So, the aphasia, again, there's nothing the pharmaceutical industry can get out of that because you can't give me a drug to fix my aphasia. So, it's a thing, right? Um, and not only that, because every stroke is so individually unique. Because every individual going into, going through, and coming out the other, eye, other side from their stroke is so individually unique, right? You can't compare your stroke journey to someone else's stroke journey. What you went through, what your aunt went through, your grandmother went through, brother, sister, daughter, whoever, anyone you happen to know, what they went through on their stroke is so individual and unique to what anyone else is going through on their stroke journey. So you can't really compare the two other than the fact that you had a stroke, right? And then you can get into comparing specifics um, about how, where, when, why the stroke, and then the outcomes, and eventually you're going to find out that you both had a stroke, and about that's where that ends, right? So just keep in mind, stroke is a bit of an orphan disorder for many reasons, and the most important reason um, is the drug companies, they're not going to make any money off of it. There's absolutely, you know, no financial gain from stroke, right? and because of that, it's an orphan disorder. Well, however, that doesn't mean because it's an orphan disorder, it's not treatable, right? There are medications for almost every situation that presents post-stroke. So there are medications, right? There are treatments that will help your life get better. But generally, those aren't medical, right? So please don't mistake the fact that I'm saying that stroke is an orphan disease or disorder means it's hopeless because it's not. Recovery, rehabilitation, and continuing your life's journey post-stroke is a completely doable thing. You're just going to have to learn to live in a new stroke world. Right? 
And for those of you that happen to like what you've been watching over the last three months and want to continue to watch, please like, share, subscribe. If you want immediate gratification to know when you can watch me again, hit the little bell icon to get the little ding ding. Right? Um, if you want to see me cover something specific, please uh, leave comments down below or email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say again, strokeassaulter at gmail.com, and I'll happily reply to your email and then um, uh, create some content if it, it seems relevant and appropriate. And for those of you that happen to be either witnessing either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being facial droop, inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all, inability to smile equally effectively or at all, slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, general body weakness or weakness on one side, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.